I've been working with an organization uh, called Empower, and that's uh, that's something that uh, has brought out a lot of good things as far as concussion reach concussion research goes, and and uh, the recovery and 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 really it's it's a resource for people to uh, guidelines and and how to how to go from from having a concussion to getting back in your everyday life, and that really just from talking to this organization and from being involved in that, we, we wanted to put together a piece that we could, uh, you know, hopefully get into the Players' Tribune. And, and after a lot of hard work with, with that team over the summer, uh, here we are. And, and I've gotten some great feedback over the last 24 hours, and it's, uh, it's been uh, really exciting. And I'm glad to, to hear, hear the feedback that we're getting on social media from uh, from people that have uh, that are being able to to relate to to what I've been talking about, Gabe. It's a fantastic article. Can you talk to us about the challenge of the, what NHL players have when when they want to be upfront about it and how they can handle it and how that mentality has to change? Yeah, it, I mean that's that's the number one thing that we we do have to talk about how how we do want to change that stigma. Obviously, in the NHL and and because as an NHL or as a, as a professional athlete, you you have a responsibility to uh, to act and, and to realize that you are being a role model, whether you whether you want to embrace that or not. And and I, uh, a lot of us feel like it's a responsibility to show younger kids and younger generations of of how to how to take care of yourself and how to play hockey, but uh, but as well as taking care of injuries such as a serious one as a concussion and. Um, and, and, and I do think that an important issue that I want to bring up, it, it doesn't necessarily have to be an NHL player, and it doesn't necessarily have to be uh, just towards uh, elite hockey players, but, but to all those kids across North America and, and across the world that that are just, you know, confused and not knowing what to do if they've had a concussion. And, and there's – because right now there isn't a whole lot of – guidelines on how to move on and, and and how to get back to everyday life and like i've talked about in, in the players tribune piece it's it, it's so hard for for as myself i was 19 years old to articulate and and to talk about what you're going through but as a as a 12 14 15 year old kid i mean it, it could be even harder especially when you have pressure coming from coaches teammates and and sometimes family as well so i just think it's important to to talk talk about that and it's a conversation i think a lot of uh, families and and parents should have with their kids uh, as far as uh being honest with themselves he's the captain of the colorado avalanche and he's also an olympic silver medalist gabriel landiscott joining us here on dean blindell and company you, you talk about gabriel how kids and, and parents need to recognize a concussion but how do you fight the urge from teammates or parents or coaches saying, "Hey, we really need you back on the ice as soon as possible." I, I think you're okay. H- how do you how do you fight that temptation as a player? By spreading this message, I think we want to try to reach out to all those coaches and all those parents and all those teammates and and uh, and try to make them understand that uh, a concussion is a completely different ball game, and it is it isn't something that you can tape up a shoulder or. Uh, whatever it might be, sprained ankle, and, and go out there and, and fight through it, um, because that's the beauty of the game. Still, that um, the you know the hockey players are tough, but uh, we still have to differentiate the difference between a concussion and any other um, injury, as far as a shoulder or or a knee or whatever it might be. Uh, we've linked uh, Gabriel's uh, story. We need to talk about concussions right now in the Players' Tribune. Added Steam Linnell. Go check it out right now. Gabriel, for those of uh, the listeners who haven't uh, read your piece yet, uh, just just fill, us, fill them in on your experiences and the symptoms and how you actually had to deal with the concussion and how just everyday life was a challenge dealing with that head injury. Yeah, it was, you know what, it started kind of the day after uh, that game where I got hurt in San Jose and a headache started coming, and and I started realizing how much uh, light was bothering me. Just everyday light, you know, just just being in a normal room that you wouldn't even acknowledge the light if you if you weren't having these uh, these symptoms and even loud noises. I mean, I was, you know, the times that I would listen to radio, I mean, it would be on on really low, and and 
things would because any any high volume whether you're walking through a, a crowded section or um you're going to the mall or whatever it might be that would just be you know really bothering me in terms of you know just too many things going on and and my eyes would start hurting and um and it just get really irritated i mean my my girlfriend and i were having a a long term or, or long distance relationship at the time and and you know should you know just get i would just get irritated on the on the smallest things and that's something that it's hard for anybody to to understand but it's almost like your your fuse is just that much shorter and and you get irritated and and i brought up a, a story in the in the piece where my roommate and i we were we were watching tv i was allowed to watch tv for sh- uh, short spurs of the at the time but um we had to dim all the lights we had to turn all the lights in the room off and um because i was getting so my my eyes started to hurt and and after a while my uh, my roommate he turned on the little uh, fireplace that we had in the corner of the living room and, and, and just to give us a little bit of light. And, and after not not more than a couple of minutes, I had to tell him, I'm sorry, buddy, but you, you're going to have to turn that off because that's really bothering me. And that's, it's something that he, he started laughing at, but, but I was, um, it's, it, that, that's the point I'm getting to. It's, it's so hard to, to explain if you haven't gone through it or if you're going through it and every con- concussion is different and, and that's why it's really important to be honest with yourself. Gabriel Landis, God captain in the Avalanche and Olympic silver medalist, joining us here on Dean Blendell and Company. That's David. I'm George. Gabriel, you won a silver medal for Sweden in 2014 in Sochi, and now you're on the Swedish uh, World Cup of Hockey entry in September. How excited are you for that event that goes down next month? Can it replace uh, the Olympics? What's the feel amongst the teammates on representing your country and in this event that's kind of making its way back on, onto the hockey scene? Well, you know what? All the guys that I've talked to are really excited about it, and obviously it's a it's a new format, and it's it hasn't been around in a while, so everybody's really excited, and I think it'll be I think it'll be a great uh, great tournament, and I and I think Toronto uh, Toronto is the place to have it in as well. I mean, that's the uh, the hockey city of the world, and and it it'll be a lot of fun, and I'm really looking forward to it. I know we get together with with Team Sweden and. Um, in Gothenburg at the uh, at the start of September and um, yeah, best of luck uh, this season and uh, we'll be uh, hoping uh, Sweden uh, loses to Canada in the gold medal game. Thanks for doing this, pal. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.